This is a microwave transformer and as you can see it has been modified. Now many a times we need to run our 110 volts appliances and we have 220 volts AC from our home socket. So in that case this modification helps because it is a step down transformer which converts it to 110 volts AC. But it has been lying around for many months so I thought about reusing it in my upcoming project. Here as you can see that I've cut off the transformer core to carry out the modification without damaging the windings which can still be used in the future and these are really valuable. Next, the primary needs no modification so leave it alone. Next, this what you see is a dead end discarded DC motor armature and I thought about reusing its armature winding to create the thick secondary winding and this is something that I have always wanted to try and the time has come. Please note that the different gauge sizes of the armature winding is not going to create any problem since all of them are being connected in parallel. And make sure that you only use the copper windings. So anyways moving on with the construction part, connect all the windings in parallel. Next connect one end of this thick wire to the vise as shown. After that, trim the other end for equal size. Next, place it in the chuck of your cordless drill. Now, turn on your drill until your wire is strong and rigid. Next comes the insulation removal part as shown since these are enameled copper wires with high temperature insulation. So for that, I'm using this butane gas which is going to melt away the enamel leaving behind only its residue which again needs to be cleaned properly with the help of a sandpaper. After completing this, simply trim the ends as shown. Now this is a big bolt and once again I have modified it to carry out this unique process of soldering the ends evenly. And it works really good as you can see. And here we go, we now have a thick new secondary which now needs some insulation for which I'm using this high temperature winding sheet and some electric tape. And make sure that it is very tight. It turned out pretty good, right? So here as you can see that I've cut off some U shapes to separate the primary and the secondary winding as shown. So the new transformer with the new voltage and current ratings is almost ready and all that is left is to do the welding of the core to complete the magnetic circuit. Here as you can see that I'm giving three arc welds on each side and there is an important reason behind that which I will be telling you later. Next comes the weld cleanup process and then starting with the test. Here as you can see that I'm connecting it to the mains. Turning it on. Oh, it has started smoking. Seems like there is something wrong with the windings. Once again, and this time let's short the secondary. Here you can see that it is definitely working, but I think the primary is damaged. So after taking out the secondary, we can clearly see the damaged part. It could be because I did cover the transformer windings before performing the arc welding and somehow some arc might have shorted it. So anyways, I luckily have a microwave oven from which I'm planning to salvage a new microwave transformer. If you look closely, you can see the transformer at the bottom. Although it has a lot more components which can be useful for me in the future. So anyways, let's focus on the transformer and take it out. So here we have our new transformer. And it looks fine. Also, here I'm showing you this core welding area, 
which I personally do not like because it shorts up the silicon steel core and thus reducing the overall transformer efficiency. So I'm not sure why these companies go for the welding process of these transformer cores. Anyways, let's strip the transformer winding wires so that we can move on with the testing part of this transformer. Please note that this transformer can output up to 2000 volts AC with one amps output current, which is extremely dangerous and can definitely kill anyone. Here you can see the arc length of the output windings it is phenomenal so try not doing it at home now after cutting off the core we can have a closer look on the new primary it is new and shiny here you can see that I'm using this toothbrush to hammer this winding safely and move it to the bottom. Now here is some additional core that comes pre-installed with the transformer. So I'm placing it back as it was before. And finally, let's wound the secondary once again and hope that it works this time without any problem. Although this transformer feels a little smaller than it was before, but the windings fit same as the previous one. So this time I'm carrying out all the winding protection as you can see. It's a great loss that I've destroyed my previous transformer with some silly mistake, which could have easily been avoided. Anyways, I'm giving only three welds on each side to reduce core losses. Next comes some strong terminal making for secondary endpoints. And finally, it is time to do the test. <laughs> there, as you can see, that it is working pretty good. So many amperes. Now, let's do some ampere tests to see if I'm reaching around 500 amperes, as you people chose in the community polls. So the maximum current that we reached was around 481 amperes AC which should be more than enough for melting the aluminium pieces. Let's move on with the AC voltage test which is no longer dangerous now as it was before. And as you can see that my transformer is putting out around 2.7 volts AC which is good enough for me. So let's move on with the making of the crucible heating plate. Now this is the very same plate which I used in my previous project where I used some UPS transformers instead of this one microwave transformer. Now this is a mini crucible that I've made from a big carbon brush. Now let's put in some aluminium pieces and turn on the transformer and at the same time I'm also measuring the amperes drawn. The drawn amperes as you can see are increasing and increasing and closing at around 100 plus uh, it has easily melted all the aluminium inside it. So this is definitely a cheap replacement for an induction heating machine for casting purposes. Although the size of my crucible is quite small and I cannot place a big crucible instead of this one until I've made a proper cooling system for this transformer because it is going to be turned on for longer durations until we are done with the melting process. And this high transformer temperature will have a really bad impact on the winding insulation. 
So once we have placed some big PC cooling fans to cool up the windings, I think we can then move on to a bigger crucible. But until then, I hope you are satisfied with this experiment and happy with the results. Also, please note that I have carried out a similar experiment with some UPS transformers. So if you haven't watched that experiment, please go to the link provided in the description. So here as you can see that the casting is complete and I tried giving this molten aluminium the shape of a bolt. It looks quite similar to it, especially from the edges, but without any hollow threads. Also, make sure to share my video with your friends and colleagues so that they can join my channel same as you. And to further support my work, make sure to hit like and join my membership. Please note that I have started these quizzes and community polls so that you can learn new things every day plus choose the next upcoming project that you want from the list. The highest votes will get their project selected. With that being said, stay safe. Bye bye.